The Saints OTAs have officially started, the offseason programs have begun, and we're starting to get a look at what the Saints are doing this offseason during these camps. While the Saints didn't sign any big name players or make a whole bunch of big moves in the offseason, there is still a lot to look at and get ready for for this season. A new offense, a new offensive coaching staff, how the offensive line looks. Does the offense use more motion? Does A.T. Perry become the contested catch physical pass catcher? What does the tight end room look like? Then on the defensive side, what does the defensive line look like? Who's the starting linebacker next to Demario Davis? What's going to happen between Alante Taylor, Kule McKinstry? What's the cornerback situation looking like? What's the safety situation looking like? Even special teams. There's a lot to go over with this team. And even though the Saints didn't make any big moves in the offseason, there's still a lot to go over and be excited for. So we're going to take a look at what happened during the first OTA practice for the Saints. And before we get into any of that, I was not there. Uh, I got all this information from tweets from Nick Underhill, Mike Triplett, John Hendricks, Ross Jackson, um, Jeff Novak, Catherine Terrell, uh, Ross Jackson, basically all the big Saints reporters, everyone who covers the team. I follow them on Twitter. I read their stuff, show them support. So make sure you guys show them support as well. I put links to all their Twitters in the description. Without further ado, let's dive into the first OTA practice. So the first thing that everyone's going to talk about is the attendance. 12 players were out. These are optional. Just a reminder, these are optional team activities. So the Saints were missing Marshawn Lattimore as expected. He never he never really shows up to the optional stuff. Ryan Ramchek wasn't there. That's expected. We don't even know he's going to be playing football again. Chase Young, that was expected. He had his neck surgery in march april around that time so that's expected running back alvin camaro was gone now he also misses the optional stuff he's a smart dude i'm not really worried about it both him and jamal williams both missing the optional stuff is not concerning but it is a new offensive system and maybe they should be there to learn it but at the same time they're nfl vets they know what to do they're smart players smart people i'm sure they'll figure it out and be fine come mini camp and training camp Stanley Morgan, Nathan Shepard, Tano Passanio, Nate Latu, Jalen Ford, Nephi Sewell were also not available. Jalen Ford, the rookie linebacker, had a hernia surgery or something like that not that long ago. So that's why he was there. And everyone else, Dennis Allen, said he was aware of why they were not at the practice. Also, Kalei McKinstry, who had that foot surgery in February, I believe, he was out there but not practicing. He was like on the, on the workout bike. And some other notable things, Cameron Jordan was there, but off to the side, not really participating. He also had surgery on his ankle. He said he will be back soon. Brian Brzee, Jordan Howden, Ali Udo, Nathan Peterman, Mark Evans, Tommy Hudson were off to the side or they weren't really doing too much. So they were kind of limited in some capacity. So that was all the attendance for the Saints in terms of who was there, who wasn't participating, who was off to the side. Now, the most important thing that was probably taken away from this practice is the offensive line. The Saints, again, had Talisay Fuaga, the first round pick that they just drafted. They had him at left tackle. We know from rookie minicamp that the Saints were going to try him out at left tackle. And Trevor Penning was at right tackle during OTAs. Dennis Allen said throughout the summer, they're gonna flip flop, they're gonna have Penning on the left, Penning on the right, Flog on the left, Flog on the right. They're gonna switch and see whoever's the best at whichever position, that's the place that they're gonna be at. But the coaches did say that the direction that they're heading is that Trevor Penning will be the right tackle. It'll give him a clean slate, having a clean off season, no injuries, no setbacks. All signs are training up for him according to the coaches and they're excited about what he can do. Now the players aren't padded up so you can't really tell who's doing good who's doing bad is this guy failing is this guy not failing but everything seems like trevor penning seemed okay he looked not lost out there on the field at the right side which is good sometimes going from one side to the other may be difficult for some people more than others and if he seems okay at the right spot then sure and if wag is really good at the left spot then great at left guard, the Saints had Nick Saudaveri, the second year left guard, and Shane Lemieux switching at left guard. So competition there. We don't know who's going to be starting there. And then Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz were the starters in the middle. Some very interesting stuff here. We have Taysom Hill. He did some stuff at fullback, running back, and tight end. Seems like his role as the quarterback or taking snaps at the quarterback spot is gone. Those snaps are for Derek Carr. He needs to learn a new offensive system. Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler learning the new system and competing for the backup spot. So Taysom Hill quarterback snaps. Taysom Hill practicing with the quarterbacks as a quarterback. Seems like those days are over. 
but I think it is interesting that having him at fullback and running back is something I think is great. The best thing he's done over the last few seasons is run the ball. Putting him in the running back room and fullback room is great. He fits the prototype of what maybe Kyle Ustrek could be. But the Saints also did sign Xander Horvath as a fullback, so maybe him and Taysom Hill are having a little bit of a competition with Adam Prentice. So the offensive coaching staff is already getting stuff done with Taysom Hill. They're not dummies. They're finally getting him in a role where he can probably have a lot of success. Another thing the offensive system and coaches did very well, there's a lot of motion and play action already. Almost every play had motion or play action. They're getting it installed. This is on day one. So this is the foundation and the basics of this offense. And that is a great thing here after the offenses we've seen on the Saints over the last few seasons. It's been completely bland, outdated. It's nice to have new ideas in the building. As for the quarterbacks, Jake Hayner had a really good day. The year two quarterback spent the offseason and a lot of time last season during the regular season. He spent a lot of time with John Gruden watching film, going over plays, what he did good, what he needs to improve on, he could do to improve his fundamentals. And he looked really good out there during the first OTAs. He has a bit of an advantage over Spencer Rattler. I think Hayner has better fundamentals than Spencer Rattler, but the talent overall goes to Spencer Rattler. But Jake Hayner does have an advantage because he's been in the NFL for one season, but both of them are near one of the same system learning the new playbook. So the only advantage he has is that he's had one season already in the NFL, which is probably a bigger thing than some people may realize. But overall, Jake Hayner looked good. He had some nice plays to Chris Olave and A.T. Perry. He threw a nice tight window pass to Chris Olave, who's in tight coverage and made a nice contested catch. And he also threw a nice high ball to A.T. Perry, who made a nice one-handed snag over the middle. And as for Spencer Rattler, he had a shaky first practice. He threw an interception that came off a tip and another near interception that was a little bit high, but it was dropped. And I take this as just a rookie having a rookie day looking like a rookie that's stuff that's going to happen there's going to be day one jitters new playbook new system gotta feel a little bit more comfortable i'm sure this is just a day one kind of shaky thing jitters nervousness whatever it may be i'm not too worried about the situation everyone has their up and down days but let alone this is like his fourth practice as a saint in the nfl I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Spencer Rattler though did have a pretty big completion to Bub means completing on a deep pass down the right sideline. And as for Derek Carr, there wasn't a lot talked about in regards to him and the day he had, but it seemed like he had a good day. He's still learning the playbook. Clint Kubiak said he's always working late after hours, after practice, learning the playbook, trying to get it down. He did have a few check downs, had a solid day, had a nice pass to Chris Olave, who made a nice catch with Elante Taylor in tight coverage. Now a position that we're all kind of keeping an eye on is tight end and Dylan Hulker with the undrafted guy had a nice day. He's someone who we all think is going to make the roster but also Michael Jacobson a guy who's been on the practice squad on and off kind of reserved for the Saints. He looked solid out there as well for the Saints at the tight end spot. So two names to keep an eye on at the tight end position and I believe Dylan Hulker actually got some reps with the first team in the starters. And someone that is not being talked about enough, but we've talked about a lot on this channel. We have a whole video about it. Keith Williams, the Saints wide receiver coach, seems like someone the fan base, the players are all going to love. He seems very enthusiastic, someone who the players love. He trained Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill. He was Zay Flowers wide receiver coach in Baltimore last season. He loved him. James Jones, Raiders and Packers former wide receiver loved him. He's someone who's going to help this young receiver room of A.T. Perry, Chris Olave, Rashid Chihi, Bub means all of them reach their full potential having a guy like him in the room who also knows Derek Carr because he was a coach at Fresno State when Derek Carr was there is a huge, huge, huge bonus for this team. He's going to hold you accountable, give you crap for it, but at the same time make you better through it. He's going to be someone that the players are going to love. That's all the stuff for the offensive side. As for the defense, something that a lot of people were trying to keep an eye on was the cornerback situation because Marshawn Lattimore was not there and Cooley McKinstry is injured. He can't really participate yet. So what happens at outside corner? Does Alante stay in the slot? So as for the corners, when they had just two guys out there, it was a Paulson Adebo and Alante Taylor outside as expected. Two very talented guys on the outside on the boundary. But when the Saints went to a nickel look, Alante Taylor went inside and played in the slot and Rajon Wright went outside. So it seems like the Saints are still sticking with Alante Taylor being a slot corner. 
And as we all know, based off some deleted tweets from Alante Taylor, it doesn't seem like he's too thrilled about being a slot corner. It hasn't embraced that role yet, if, if at all he's ever going to embrace it. There wasn't really too much about the linebackers. Pete Warner and Willie Gay got rotations both at the first team. They're in a competition, obviously. They were also on the field at the same time with Demario Davis at some point, so not too much there. The safeties, Jonathan Abram was starting with Tyron Matthew as Jordan Howden was off to the side. And as for the defensive line, they had Carl Granderson and Isaiah Foskey switching with Peyton Turner with the starting group. That's about all the stuff that was noted from the, the OTAs that was tweeted out and written about. If you want to get more details, because there is a lot of stuff that I didn't mention, make sure you guys check out the reporters' articles, give them their support. Now, I want to talk about some things that Dennis Allen and Mickey Loomis said over the last few days that are kind of very interesting. So when asked about Marshawn Lattimore and the whole situation, we know that he said that he had a conversation with Lattimore, a positive conversation, and they're moving forward. He was asked about that again after the OTA practice, and he seemed pretty confident that Lattimore would be on the team. A reporter asked him, do you expect Lattimore to be on the team in 2024? And he said yes. He said he had that conversation with Lattimore because he felt it was important because of all the trade talks, the rumors, and everything going on outside of the building. He felt like it was important to have that conversation and clear things up. And that's the way things are looking right now that Lattimore will be back with the team in 2024. Something that Mickey Loomis mentioned that I found int very interesting was that the Saints tried to re-sign Andres P. I think it would have been a good move just simply because of the lack of talent and depth and certainty at the offensive line position. Would have been nice to have him back. He was solid last season at left tackle. Would have been nice just a depth guy basically a safety net but he ended up signing with the Raiders not a big loss but would have been nice to have him back Kool-Aid McKinstry who's currently wearing number 34 he said himself that 34 is just what he's wearing now but things are going to change after training camp now if you look and remember Marshawn Lattimore actually wore number 34 when he first started and changed his number after training camp to number 23. So Kula McKinstry is on the right path and the same path that Marshawn Lattimore was. Both coming out of college had some injury concerns. Marshawn Lattimore with the hamstring, kool now with the foot. Both wore number 34 and are both changing their numbers after. He's on the right path for sure. Something I forgot to mention about the OTAs was the special teams because this is important. Kicker and punter are both positions that have question marks. Lou Headley looked a lot better. His hang times were better. He was booting it. Seems nice and hopefully he is better because I cannot stand his punts in his punting last season. Blake Groupie went 7 of 7 which is a good sign. As for the other guys who are competing with them, there wasn't really anything talked about in regards to the hang times or how good the kicker was. There wasn't really too much talked about in regards to how they did. That's about everything covered from the tweets and articles I read. Make sure you guys go check those out. One last thing, Anthony Orji did force a fumble on Kendra Miller, who was the main starting running back with Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams not at the practice. So just something important to maybe note. Let me know your biggest takeaway from the OTA practices. For me, it's Trevor Penning at right tackle. And I think to me, that is a huge, huge, huge thing. Subscribe to my channel for more NFL content if you made it this far. Have a good one. Peace.